So today I will be discussing to you about the code of ethics for professional teachers. So, the Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers was promulgated because of one of the reasons is from Section 2 of RA 7836, wherein it requires teachers to be professional at all times and at the same time secure that the teaching profession is really something which is uh, promoted positively or reflected positively through its members, particularly the teachers. So, what are the stated uh, things that teachers must remember in the Code of Ethics? First thing we have here, look at this picture. <laughs> oh, by the way, this is a borrowed presentation, but nevertheless, let's focus on the content. So, teachers are said to be... Uh, uh, teachers are said to be the molders of the generations. We are the noblest profession, or this is the noblest profession, because we create other professions. Without teachers, we cannot uh, come. Uh, we cannot produce graduates who would become, let's say, businessmen. We cannot produce graduates who would become engineers because they need teachers to guide them in their chosen field. So teaching is a field which creates another profession. So the role of the teacher is very demanding. As what you can see here, the teacher is the one teaching. At the same time, there are other paperwork that the teacher must consider. Pasan mo ang daigdig. Char. So why? Because you are carrying the, the future generations. Nakasalalay sa'yo yung future generation. Next, we have here, so what is the preamble? The, code of eth the preamble of the Code of Ethics states that teachers are duly licensed professional who possesses dignity and reputation with high moral values as well as technical and professional competence in the practice of their noble profession, and they strictly adhere to, observe, and practice the set of ethical and moral principles, standards, and values. Again, we have here, teachers are duly licensed professionals. It means we are, if you are a teacher, you are really a professional one, a licensed professional, because you will take the board exam to be called a professional teacher. And of course, you possess dignity and reputation. It means that even outside the classroom, you present yourself with, uh, you present yourself professionally because you represent this noble profession. And of course, you are competent in your job, the technical and professional aspect. You know how to uh, present yourself. You know how to carry yourself in public. You are competent with your job. You know what you're talking about, and so on. And of course, if you are, uh, you practice this double profession, you observe, adhere, and follow these set of ethical and uh, principles, standards, and values. Again, you observe, you practice, you adhere, you follow these set of principles, and so on. So that's the preamble. So please remember this one. Next, so to so, uh, not to so, to give you an overview about the code of ethics, we have actually thirteen, one, three articles. So Article One, that's the scope and limitation. It tries to it tries to identify what are the set of boundaries of the covered for this code of ethics. Section two, it talks about the teacher and the state. Section three, it talks about the teacher and the community. Section four, it talks about the teacher and the profession. Section five, it talks about teachers and the teaching community. Section 6, it talks about the teacher and the higher authorities of the Philippines. Se uh, section 7, it talks about school officials, teachers, and other personnel. Section 8, it talks about the teacher and the learners. Section 9, it talks about the teacher and the parents. Section 10, it talks about the teacher and the business. Section uh, Article 11, sorry, it's article, not section. Article 11, it talks about the teacher as a person. 
Article 12, it, talk, it talks about the teacher, uh, uh, the disciplinary actions, what will happen to the teacher. And section 30, uh, Article 13, this is about the effectivity of this uh, code of ethics. So these are the articles of the code of ethics. Now, it's time to go through with these articles one by one. Let's start first with Article 1, which is scope and limitations. So when we say scope, what is covered and limitation, ano yung hanggang saan? So Section 1, this code shall apply to all teachers in schools in the Philippines. So if Magna Carta focuses on public school teacher, the teachers, the code of ethics already includes the Pop up private school teachers. So, regardless of your level, whether you are elementary, secondary, or tertiary teacher, your tertiary level, you are covered with this code of ethics. Next, public covers public and private school teachers in all educational institutions at the primary, elementary, secondary levels, whether academic, vocational, special, technical, and non-formal. Even if you are an ALS teacher, a mobile teacher, a parent teacher, still you are covered with this code of ethics. Teacher, industrial arts, or vocational teachers are also other persons performing super supervisory and supervisory and or administrative functions in all schools whether on full-time or part-time basis so again this is the teaching profession this is the demand for teachers in the teaching profession so uh all teachers, whether private or public, they need to follow the code of ethics because it's true to everybody. So even if you are a, a principal, an administrator, you need to follow this code of ethics. So Article 2, we have here the teacher and the state ano yung relationship ni teacher sa state or sa country niya so ano yung mga ginagampanan or ano yung dapat i-observe and i-follow ni teacher bilang role niya sa state or sa uh, country na nasasakupan niya or where he or she is part of so we have here section 1 the schools are the nurseries of the future citizens of the state when we say nursery, it means it is something where you nourish, uh, uh, nourish, nourish a child. Nourish in such a way that you feed them with information. Nourish in such a way that you, you let them feel that they are, not, uh, they are part of that group and they are not alone. Nourish is in such a way that you help them grow and develop. Each teacher is a trustee of the cultural and educational heritage of the nation. It is our responsibility as teachers to preserve the culture and educational heritage of our country. And it is our obligation to transmit to learners such heritage. So, kung, so it is one of our responsibilities as teachers to transmit the heritage or the values that we uphold as Filipinos to our students. Example, teaching about history. It is our, uh, it is our responsibility to let our students know about the significant events in our history which greatly contribute to the things that we are currently enjoying now. Promote national pride. Cultivate, cultivate love for country. Instill alliance to the Constitution and all duly constitute, uh, constituted authorities. Hindi yung hinihikayat natin silang maging rebelde. Mali yun. Dapat, hinihikayat natin silang i-obey yung laws ng state. To be good citizens, not bad citizens. We should encourage them to follow the rules and laws, not to break the, loo, uh, the laws. Okay? Section 2, every teacher or school official shall actively help carry out the declared policies of the state and shall take an oath to this effect. So, dapat responsibilidad mong 
uh yun nga you, it's your uh, it's your responsibility to carry out Uh, to help carry out the declared policies of the state. It means it is your responsibility or one of your responsibilities to educate our citizens, especially your students, about the policies of the state. Okay? So, dapat tinuturuan mo sila kung ano man yung uh, nice ng state na maging sila. Like, for example, in our constitution, we should teach our students about the constitution. That's why we have both size subjects. Next, we have here Article 2, Section 3. In the interest of the state and of the Filipino people, as much of his own, every teacher shall be physically, mentally, and morally fit. So, dapat physically, mentally, and morally fit ka. Bakit? Being a teacher is not easy. It requires, it, it is a demanding, demanding job. So, how would you be able to fulfill such a job if you are not physically healthy? If you are not mentally and morally fit? How would you be able to give something if you don't have it? How will you be able to teach your students about values? How will you be able to inculcate values and morals to your students if you don't have it? So, of course, you need to, to be equipped or to be physically fit or mentally and morally fit in order to also uh, develop or form citizens and students who are these who are with these set of qualities every teacher shall possess and actualize a full commit commitment and devotion to duty kung pinasok mo ang teaching profession dapat committed ka dapat padag dapat gampanan mo ang tungkulin mo ng maayos. Even if nobody is watching, even if your principal will not observe you, even if your principal will not uh, visit your classroom for classroom observation, still, you must be committed with your job, with your profession. Because again, the future of the next generation relies greatly on how you will mold them. Next one, section 5. A teacher shall not engage in the promotion of any political, religious, or other partisan interest and shall not directly or indirectly solicit, require, collect, or receive any mon money or service or other valuable material from any person or entity for such purposes. As much as possible, teachers, you should not engage in the promotion of any political political affairs you should not uh, publicly promote anybody for such position or you should not uh what they call this one uh influence others to 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 follow your religion because you think your religion is better than others no and you should not directly or indirectly solicit or ask for money Okay, wala kang karapatan kasi binabahiran mo ng masamang, uh, you are giving a negative image or impression to the teaching profession if you are using this. Remember, you should not affect or influence your students in terms of religious religion choices. If you are a part of this religion, be it, but do not let your students or do not force them to also follow your religion. Then we have your section 6. Six. Six, every teacher shall vote and shall exercise all other constitutional rights and responsibility. Dapat, you should vote. You should vote during election. That's why remember, in the Magna Carta, you are not allowed to transfer to any station at least three months before an election. It's your responsibility to vote, and at the same time, uh, it's as what I've said. It is part of the code of ethics. 
Next, section 7. A teacher shall not use his position or official authority to influence or coerce any other person to follow any political course of action. As what I have said, do not use your name to coerce or force anybody to follow your political stand. If you believe that this government is not doing its best, do not influence others. Do not force others to also mock the government. That's your opinion. Do not influence your students to also follow your opinion. They have their own stand and you don't have any right to influence them or to force them. And that is already a violation to the code of ethics. If you will feed them negativity just uh, just uh, just because you wanted to force them to say negative things about the uh, to the government, still that is a no no. Section eight: Every teacher shall enjoy academic freedom and shall have privilege expounding the product of his researches and investigations. What does it mean? My karapatan ka in terms of choosing. In terms of how you deal with the teaching and learning process. Kung mang activities na gagawin, gagawin mo, it's your choice. If you wanted to use this type of piece, that's your choice. Walang karapatan ang sino man para diktahan ka. They cannot force you because the code of ethics promote, promotes academic freedom. What does it mean again? Dapat, Kung ano man yung gusto mo, kasi alam mong bagay to sa mga mag-aaral mo, you can do that one. Okay? In terms of research, you can cover a lot of research. You can investigate many things. However, dapat yung resulta ng research mo is, okay, is, oh, provided that if the result of your research is something which is not good for the image of the government, or the, the state, they shall be brought to the proper authorities for appropriate med remedial action. Kung feeling mo yung, uh, yung, yung result ng research mo, it should be handled by higher officials. You should give it to them. Okay, it's in the code of ethics because again, they are the ones who can give immediate action for this one. And what is academic freedom again? For your information, academic freedom. The Supreme Court of the U.S. said that academic freedom means a university can determine for itself on academic ground. So, may karapatan silang uh, i-identify kung sino ang magtuturo, ano ang ituturo, paano ito itututuro, ituturo, and sino ang maaaring turuan. Okay, so that's, that is academic freedom. Next, we have here Article 3, the teacher and the community. So, ano ang relationship ni teacher kay community? According to Section 1, a teacher is a facilitator of learning and of the development of the youth and render the best service by providing an environment conducive to such learning and growth. So again, you facilitate or you help and guide your students to become good citizens. And uh, you should give an environment which is conducive for learning of, for the learning of the students. They will really be, uh, they will really uh, develop their leadership skills inside the classroom. Next, shall provide leadership and initiative to actively participate in community movements for moral, social, educational, and economic civic betterment. So, it's your right to also participate and uh, you should have the initiative to be active in your community. That's why if you happen to observe, uh, pag may mga, pag may mga activity sa society or sa isang barangay, Yung mga guru talaga uh, seems to be very active. Example, during fiesta, they they have some, they uh, the school itself will conduct a, let's say, gabi ng parangal, or what, I, I, I forgot the names, a presentation of, a presentation of the teachers, uh, teachers and students, talents, di ba? Sumasayaw si teacher, 
si Masayo yung mga guro, nagpa-perform si students. So, ganon. Because it's their one way of being active to the environment, uh, to the community. Shall merit reasonable and social recognition, shall behave with honor and dignity at all times, refrain from such activities as gambling, smoking, drunkenness, and other excess, much less illicit relations. So, of course, uh, the way you perform or the way you carry yourself in a community must really be professional at all times. Di yung ikaw pa yung pasimuno ng gambling, yung pasugalan, di yung ikaw pa mismo ang pasimuno ng mga chismis sa barangay, di yung ikaw yung napakarami mong kaaway sa mga kaparangay mo, kabarangay mo. Smoking, people would publicly see you smoking. People will see you drunk anywhere in your barangay and other stuff. So, again, whether you are outside or inside the classroom, always uphold dignity at all times. Next one, we have your article, uh, six, uh, section 4. Shall live for and with the community. Shall study and understand the local customs and traditions in order to be to have sympathetic attitude and refrain from disparaging the community. You are living in that community, part ka ng community. So what what will you do as member of that community? Understand and study its local customs so that you will be able to understand your students who are coming from that community you should also understand your community as a whole ano nga ba ang mga pinahawakang tradisyon ng community ito paano nga ba sila natututo ano nga ba ang mas naiintindihan nila ano nga ba ang level nila ano nga ba ang lingwahe ginagamit nila in order to become more uh to in order to be to establish a more close relationship with your students and to have a better learning experience with your students try to also adopt what you guess one contextualization and how do you adopt contextualization it means you are trying to embrace their local culture and you are bringing that one inside the classroom do not uh do not say any negative points about the culture of that community. Do not try to ruin the image of the community, but you are trying to utilize it for an effective teaching and learning process. Section 5 shall help the school keep the people in the community invo informed about the school work accomplishments as well as the needs and problems. So, karapatan din, uh, responsibilidad, responsibilidad din ni school na i-inform si community kung ano man yung mga activities ni school or ano man yung mga accomplishments. That's why, if you happen to observe, every June, there is Brigada Escuela, right? And, Paano ba ina-announce ng school yung Brigada Escuela? Sa tulong ni community. They will go, they will ride the community van or community vehicle and room around the uh, the barangay, the vicinity of the barangay. And oh, attention, attention! Magpahiga yun, and so on. The, 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 this certain school, Agusa National High School, will conduct or he, uh, conduct a Brigada Escuela and you are requested to and so and so so far. And if you happen to observe, during recognition or during, uh, what they call this one, during graduation ceremony, one of the people who are invited to witness that one is the local barangay officials because again they are partners with the school next it is an intellectual leader in the community shall welcome the opportunity to provide such leadership when needed extend counseling services as appropriate to actively involve in matters affecting the welfare welfare of the people so again you are an intellectual leader of the community so my alam ka you're a professional so it means you can be someone whom others can easily talk if they have problems. So you can provide also counseling services. You can talk to people, uh, 
process their problems. However, of course, there's like me, there should be limitations. Kung may problema, ikaw dapat yung isa sa mga nag uh, pumapagit na para ma-resolve yun, not the one who is involved in the problem. So, and last one, every teacher shall maintain harmonious and pleasant personal and official relations with other professionals, with government officials, and with the people individually and collectively. So, again, dapat di mo kaaway, wala ka, not really walang kaaway. As much as possible, your relationship with the people in your community is professional, even the government officials. A teacher possesses freedom to attend church and worship as appropriate, but shall not, he not use his position to influence, to proselyte others. It means you have the freedom to attend your church, to worship your God. However, you don't have any right to convert other people. Next, Article 4, which is the teacher and the profession. So first one, section one, every teacher shall actively ensure that teaching is the most noble is the noblest profession and shall manifest genuine enthusiasm and pride in teaching as a novel couple calling. So of course, uh what people see in you would also reflect how you see your profession. If people will see that you're enjoying it, so people will think that teaching is really something enjoyable. If people will see that you are very, uh, you, you always talk negative about your profession, people will also assume that being in your profession is not good. That's why, so that we get to uphold the image of the teaching profession as being the noblest profession, you should uh, be proud that you are part of the, that profession. Dapat maging proud ka na isa kang guro. Di lang nila lang 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 mo siya. Every teacher shall uphold the highest possible standards of quality education, shall make the best preparations to, for the career of teaching, and shall be at his or her best at all times and in the practice of his profession. Many people are watching us. Every wrong, uh, wrong move, people will criticize us. We should always uphold the highest possible standards in providing quality education. We should try to erase those uh, point of views na pag mga teacher nagpapalinis lang yan ng koko sa inside the classroom, during TLE nagpapabuti lang yan and all, or puro utang lang yan, etc. You must make sure that you are doing your best and you are giving your best to practice your profession. You should be your best if you are a teacher. So what is quality education? How would we say that quality education? It is making sure that the basic education is really solid because it is. if it is not solid, it affects the quality of secondary education. If secondary education is poor, then the person goes to college unprepared for college work and if he or she is allowed to graduate again with a poor quality college education, he goes to the university professional education even more unprepared. So quality education, it means you are really molding your students the best way they can become. You are trying to help your students become the best of the best, become their best versions. Next, two basic methods of ensuring quality. How do we, uh, what are the basic methods of ensuring quality? We have here faculty development, student development, improving school facilities, and administrative uh uh, processes. So there must be faculty development and we have your student development also. Next, we have here Article 4, the teacher and the profession, Section 3, every teacher shall participate in the continuing professional education or the CTD. 
of the PRC or Professional Regulation and Commission and shall pursue such other studies as well as will improve his efficiency, enhance the prestige of the profession, and strengthen his competence, virtues, and productivity in order to be nationally and internationally competitive. Always say yes to development. If there, uh, if there are, uh, if there are seminars, attend it, especially if it's for free. If there are opportunities for growth, then grab it. If there are cases wherein you needed to uh, improve and go for further studies, grab it. Enroll in MA. Enroll in PhD so that you will become more competent in your field. So published Supreme Court case in Evelyn Pena versus NLC, the SC states, schools can set high standards of efficiency for its teachers since quality education is a mandate of the Constitution. So the schools has the right to dictate what are the qualities of the teachers that they should hire. Security of tenure cannot be used to shield incompetence. So it means that one of the requirements for you to really be secured in your job is to really become competent in your profession. And how do you uh, how do we measure competence nowadays? One of it is providing proof through your degrees. You should earn MA, PhD, or attend many seminars. And we have your uh, section four. The teacher shall help if duly authorized to seek support from the school but shall not make inappropriate misrepresentation through personal advertisement and other questionable means. So you can help the school. You can ask support from people. But you should not use any inappropriate misrepresentation. Like for example, like example, you, you will... Uh, you will say that, ah, para to sa, ano, para to sa principal namin kasi birthday ng principal natin. So, you're asking money from others just because for a party. Or, uh, or you will get support from questionable means. Yung pinal, uh, yung, uh, the money that you won from lotto or sweaters, you will donate it to the school. So, and you will not inform people about it. So that is a no-no. Section 5. Every teacher shall use the teaching profession in a manner that makes dignified means of earning a decent le living. So dapat, uh, you should promote teaching as something which is very a very nice job in earning something. And earning in teaching is really dignified and it's really decent. So, of course, Work also, uh, properly work, work also so that you will be compensated or you will uh, show that whatever has been given to you as a salary is really uh, enough to equate your efforts in, in the teaching field. Next one we have here. The teacher, Article 5, the teacher and the teaching community. So, ano yung relationship ni teacher sa mga katrabaho niya sa teaching community? First, professional loyalty, mutual confidence, and faith in one another shall sacrifice for the common good and full cooperation with colleagues support one another. So, regardless of your differences, your religions, your political sides, Still, make sure that your relationship is professional. It means that whatever your differences are, it will not affect your professional life. It will not hinder you to be uh, to give what is best for your students. Section two: Refrain from claiming credit of work not of his own and give due credit for the work of others which he or she may use. Dapat. You should, uh, you should not, uh, you should refrain from claiming yung mga bagay na di naman sa'yo. If example, your principal 
your principal uh, uh, requested you to make a research. Then the principal uh, published the research under his name. So this is already a violation of Section 2 of Article 5 because this, uh, the principal claimed the work of others, which is not his, and he did not give credits to uh, those people who really work hard for that research. Next, organize and leave to his successor such records and other data as necessary to, car to carry on the work before leaving. Example, you will be transferred to another school. So kung ano man yung mga maiiwan mo, dapat you will properly orient kung sino man yung uh, maiiw, kung sino man yung uh, susunod sa pwesto mo. Example, if you're a principal, if matatransfer ka sa ibang, sa ibang school, you should, uh, that's why we have your turnover ceremony because you will turn over or orient all the documents that the next principal will be working on. Okay? So, binibigay mo yung karapatan sa susunod na person. So that di sila mangangapa, ano ba to, ano ba to, ano ba to? An saan ba ang problema? Bakit ba ganito? So they will know what to do because you have oriented them. You should not ghost them. You should not uh, leave them hanging. Section 4, shall keep confidential information concerning ANSA states and the school and shall not divulge to anyone documents which are not, uh, which has not been officially released. Oh, careful with your mouth. Dapat, kung confidential yung information, yung mga records, do not share it to anybody. Especially if those are, are not yet uh, officially released. If, uh, if, informations are not yet publicized, do not be the one who will share it to everybody through your Facebook. I-update mo sa Facebook, ganito, ganito, na may ganito, and so on. Wala pa kang official release ng message na yan, pero you already shared it, and that is a no-no. If it's confidential, keep it confidential. Section 5. Seeks correctives for what may appear to be an unprofessional or unethical conduct of any associate. However, if it if there is uncontrovertible evidence for such conduct, you may uh you may maari mong ireklamo para makorek yung mga nakikita mong unprofessional conduct sa paligid. However, there must be proper evidence. If, for example, si Teacher A, nakikita, nakita mo si Teacher A who is into drugs inside the, inside the school premise, you can address that one to the proper authorities. First, to the principal. However, there must be proper evidence for such. Or else, baka mabahiran mo yung image mo. An image ng teacher na involved in that certain situation. Kasi, everybody is not guilty unless otherwise it is proven. How will you prove it? Present a correct and clear evidence. Submit to the proper authorities. So what will you do? Submit to the proper authorities any justifiable criticism against an associate Preferably in writing. So, kung may i-reklamo ka, may isusumbong kang kasamahan mo, you should write a letter about that one without violating any rights of the individual concerned. And it must not be, di dapat yan anonymous. Dapat ipakilala mo yung, ipakilala mo yung sarili mo. Because, why would you be afraid? to reveal the truth if you are indeed telling the truth. May apply for a vacant position for which he is qualified provided that he respects the system of selection on the basis of merit and competence provided further that all qualified candidates are given the opportunity to be considered. As a teacher, you have a right may karapatan kang mag-apply sa any vacant position. Example, 
assistant principal, vacancy assistant principal. You can apply to that position as long as you are qualified. As long as you know that you are qualified. And as long as you respect na kung sino man ang makuha if ever, it is only because of competence. It is because of the merit. And you know that everybody who are qualified are given the opportunity to be selected or considered. Di yung para, yung, para lang yun sa iyo. Or you are very close-minded. Okay, so...